Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to another Warhammer Lore video. And more precisely, another installment of Beasts of the Old World. Though I do admit, the title Beasts of the Old World does somewhat imply a natural origin of the creature in question. You know, I'm animal, a beast, a wild thing living in the forest doing whatever wild creatures do when they're not busy hunting, eating, or pooping all over the place. So one might therefore argue that making a beast of the old world video about a glorified test tube baby of considerable proportions, admittedly, might be somewhat outside of the ballpark. But I put forth the argument that the dragon ogre as well was not an entirely natural creature, having been granted its remarkable longevity by gods rather than by mother nature. And when one also further takes into consideration the oft-chaotic nature of a great deal of the old world's wildlife, then I ask, can you truly ever for sure make a hard differential between a natural creature and one affected by chaos? I say no. And that is the only sliver of justification I need to indulge yet again in my favourite topic, Skaven, and in this case, the Rat Ogre. Now we have of course touched upon the most famous and vicious invention of Clan Mulder before in the literal Clan Mulder lore video, but I feel that these ferocious little critters deserve a spotlight all of their very own. Though tragically, shining too much of a revealing light on the backstory of the rat ogres and their origins may be difficult. Escaped society is not one overly occupied with the arts of record keeping, particularly when those records might be used to reveal the trade secrets of master mutators of Clan Mulder. And it's difficult to judge them too harshly for that, considering that even the smallest, measliest, most pathetic of rat ogre individuals sell for hundreds of warp tokens. Whereas the biggest, strongest, most ferocious, and most loyal examples, well, their value simply cannot be measured in mere money. <sighs> Or at least so, the merchant will tell you before asking for a truly astronomic amount of just that. Many a clan have dug itself deep into bankruptcy, trying to afford clan molders of wonder weapons. But simultaneously, many another clan has earned riches and loot unimaginable, much thanks to a pack of rat ogres tearing apart their enemies' lines. So how did Clan Mulder come about this gold mine then? What is the origins of the rat ogre? You might be saying, hell, it's in the name, isn't it, stupid? Rat? Ogre. Clearly this is some kind of rat and ogre hybrid, right? Well, there is a possibility that there is some ogre within the malformed and monstrous DNA of the rat ogres, but apparently, according to the experts, the ogres of the Mountains of Morn themselves, if there is any ogre in them, it's not a whole lot. And taking that along with the rat ogre's behavioural pattern, their external appearance, and of course Clan Mulder's preferred breeding stock, it would appear that the rat part of the rat ogre is absolutely the dominant one. It's also worth mentioning that whilst it is a relatively stable mutation, no two rat ogres are ever quite the same in size, in strength, in temperament, in toughness, in the sharpness of their senses, or hell, even something as fundamental as the number of limbs. There can be quite some variety there as well. And this is all 
before the Master Mutators begin their long and arduous personalized process of enhancements and customizations. Now clearly there is a baseline rat ogre, so we can make a reasonable assumption that there is some form of generally accepted process through which new rat ogres are created. But simultaneously, the wide variety in specimens also tell us that once there is a base level recipe, shall we call it, a lot of mutators add their own little personal touches, their own flair onto the project. One master may, for example, be able to create the biggest and the bulkiest rat ogres, capable of carrying the heaviest of armor, transforming them into living battering rams. Another's philosophy might focus more around speed. Extra nimble, extra quick rat ogres with lightning claws capable of shredding entire units in mere moments. Others might yet again focus on more esoterical forms of improvements, longer claws, sharper fangs, keener hearing, or perhaps even on occasion just a little extra spark of intelligence. Not too much, mind you, because the simple-minded, some might even be so rude as to say stupid behavior of the rat ogres are not an error. They're not a flaw or some mistake in the mutation process as some simple-minded, short-sighted individuals have insinuated. Oh no, no, no. It is a feature. It is entirely by design. Because the rat ogre's limited mental functions allow them to possess a trait nearly completely and utterly- oh, who am I kidding? A trait absolutely extinct within Skaven society, namely loyalty. <laughs> Oh yes, the average Skaven will happily sell his grandmother, his mother, and his favorite aunt just for the mere opportunity to backstab another rat. But a rat ogre doesn't even understand the concept of treachery. And taking into consideration the complete adoration the average feathered fiend has for that topic, you know it required some serious mind-break breeding to drive all the treason out of the rat ogres. And yet, nevertheless, Clan Mulder did it. And whilst you could put a price on strength, on size, on the intimidating effect of having a rat ogre bodyguard, the truly invaluable aspect of it is that unlike regular guards, a rat ogre will fight by your side to protect its master regardless of who the enemy is and how badly the odds are stacked against it. <laughs> Whereas aforementioned regular guards might very well decide that it's a better deal to side with the attackers rather than the defender. But for all the advantages the relative idiocy of the rat ogres provides in terms of loyalty, it does have a weakness, a mild drawback, you could say. Namely that all rat ogres are... <laughs> See, simple-minded doesn't really capture it. Stupid doesn't really capture it. Absence of thought, yes. That's probably a bit more correct. Thusly, if a rat ogre or a pack is ever deprived of guidance, either via a pack master or via the rat ogre bodyguard's owner, they won't do a damned thing, really. Or they'll wander off and do whatever their basic instincts tell them, which can be damn near anything. They might explode into a tornado of violence, which might be a good thing, presuming it's in amongst the enemy's lines, or a very, very bad thing if he's in the middle of your own warrens. Alternatively, they could go the exact 
opposite direction. Maybe they'll just wander off and start sniffing the flowers and then have a little bit of a snooze underneath a tree. Or it'll just scamper off into a corner, hunker down, start sucking its thumb and whimpering to itself. This lack of... Uh, Initiative is what makes them so loyal. It's what makes them so good weapons and what makes it, well, possible to breed them in the first place. Imagine for a second a race of intelligent rat ogres. So basically, bigger, stronger, more violent and ferocious Skaven in a society built upon backstabbing betrayal and frequent revolts by the lower classes. Yes, you can see the immediate problem with that, can't you? The rat ogres need to be stupid, otherwise Skaven society would be no more, but rat ogre society would certainly flourish in its place. So all in all, the occasional mental breakdown is a very small price indeed to pay for such lovely pets. And many a clan has driven itself deep into bankruptcy in order to acquire a suitable quantity of these adorable little things. But just as many clans have also earned riches and plunder near undreamt of, off the broad backs of rat ogre charges crushing their enemies. So how precisely are rat ogres actually used by the Skaven under Empire? Well, it depends a little bit on what kind of an enemy they're up against. In the underway wars, the constant fighting, wars, conflicts, and territorial disputes between various warring Skaven clans, the Rat Ogres are shock weapons. Most of the time, these fights are carried out at point-blank range in tiny little dark tunnels, winding narrow passageways, and claustrophobic warrants. In this kind of fighting, whomever strikes the quickest and with the most force is usually the victor, and packs of rat ogres can be sent barreling down tunnels to overrun and maul entire regiments of clan rats, or tear slaves apart by the dozens. The latter can be surprisingly vital, as more than one clan has been known to secure their own flanks by simply shoving them so full with Skaven slaves that it takes the enemy hours to cut through them all, whilst of course making sure that there are plenty of angry clan rats with pointy sticks on the other end to ensure that the slaves don't get any bright ideas about retreating. Just the kind of situation that a shock and awe weapon like the Rat Ogres are ideally suited for. I don't care how many clan rats with pointed sticks you've got behind you, if the option is charging them or a Rat Ogre. Uh, even the most cowardly slave will play the odds in a very predictable fashion in such a circumstance. Furthermore, the Rat Ogres are an ideal counter to many of the more traditionally effective weapons of underground fighting. Clan Scryer made a huge splash on the Skaven warring scene when they introduced weapons like the Warp Fire Flamethrower or the Rattling Gun. Both brilliant engineering weapons able to flens entire corridors free of life in seconds. Oh, the poisoned wind globe deers. Doesn't matter how many enemies you're facing, if you can keep them all in a small confined room and then pump it full of poisoned gas, all you have left after that is breakfast, dinner, and an evening meal or two. Normally the uh, spice and the somewhat pungent aftertaste would be too much for the more delicate races of the world, but Skaven are not picky. But the thing with poison gas, of course, is that it requires a bit of time to really get its effects going. You don't have that kind of time when you're being charged by a rat ogre. 
Even a rattling gun or a warp fire thrower will only have a split instant to bring their weapon to bear, to take aim, and to fire, and they <laughs> best hit the damn thing. Dead center. Otherwise, a very expensive weapon crew is going to be very expensive pieces scattered all over the cave floor. And of course, if you happen to be a clan with a nice, tight, synergistic relationship with Clan Mulder, you might also get relatively cheap access to some of their other creations, which work beautifully alongside the Rat Ogres. One could begin the engagement, for example, by sending in one or two or three hundred thousand normal little rats, attack rodents trained and bred in unbelievable tidal wave sized numbers by Clan Mulder. They will pull down the weak and malnourished amongst the enemy's armies, and if you're lucky and your opponent's incompetent, might even waste a little bit of ammunition as well from their valuable weapon team. Send in another hundred or so thousand giant rats to rip, tear, distract, and weaken the front lines, and then finish it all off by a thundering charge from a rat ogre battalion. Uh, you've got a warren cracking force right there. But as fun and often profitable as it is to wage war upon one's fellow rats, occasionally the horned rat, the great grand god deity of Skavendom, demands more. Overground warfare. This is an area in which the Skaven have had a somewhat uh, mixed reputation. On the one hand, their earlier cooperation with Clan Pestilence damn near saw the entirety of the Empire brought to its knees, were it not for that damnable look to count. The Empire would be nothing more than a bad memory by now. The less successful Red Pox was almost enough to break Bretonia as well, but once again, unfortunately, the great furred masses tended to get in each other's way. When, however, it is necessary to engage in warfare with the overworld dwellers, the filthy scoundrels, the unbelieving heretical swine that dwell beneath the sun, Rat Ogres still have their part to play as a form of... Well, a combination of monstrous assault creatures and cavalry, in a way. Even the lowliest Skaven will move far more rapidly than a human pathetic creatures that they are. But horses, unfortunately, can outpace even the master race that is the Skaven species. And the pink skins have figured out most infuriatingly so that if they put people with ranged weapons atop the horses, they can become damnably annoying to deal with. As while Skavendom does have some ranged weapon of their own, like the mighty Jezals of Clan Scryer, due to their preferred style of underground warfare, weapons such as bows or crossbows have never found much favor amongst their ranks. They can employ some slings, but Again, faced with pistoliers, repeating handgunners, and horse archers, these often fall somewhat short. A nice quick ambush with a rat ogre or giant rat pack, though, whilst they won't be able to keep up with the filthy pets of humankind in the long run, in a quick sprint they can prove a more than adequate countermeasure. Not to mention, you can shoot a rat ogre an awful lot of times before it stops chasing you, if it indeed ever does. Not to mention as well, the stinking pack animals of soft skin kind are not as well trained as the rat ogres and may very well panic when faced with a two meter tall monster rat. Beyond dealing with cavalry, they can also be excellent flanking forces, whilst in the underway wars they are shock 
troopers extraordinaire in the overworld, oh, they can absolutely burst their way through a formation or two of spearmen, but a smart Skaven general will engage the enemy first with the scum of his hordes, the slaves of the expendable clan rats, and then introduce half a dozen or so clan Mulder abominations into the flanks of your enemy's formations. Then all you need to do is watch out for flying body parts and enjoy your victory as they roll up the enemy's lines. Oh, and I suppose I should uh, mention that there are some patently insane Mulder creators that have also tried to pair rat ogres with clan scryer technology to create other things with rotary cannons for arms and such yucky nonsense. But you know what? That... Mm, it's it smacks of more of a um, oh, what what do they call it again? Um, Finnish timey things, end daisy things. I don't know. Frankly, I don't even believe that kind of stuff exists. So let's just wrap it up there. The Rat Ogre, a slightly less natural beast of the old world, mayhaps, but nevertheless an adorable little creature. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.